Hi everyone, let's talk about Chebyshev's inequality. Our main tool is going to be something called the rearrangement inequality. What the rearrangement inequality states is that if n is a positive integer and we have real number sequences x1 less than or equal to x2 less than or equal to all the way through to xn y1 less than or equal to y2 less than or equal to all the way through to yn. So these are two finite sequences of n real numbers. And if we have a bijection or permutation from 1, 2 through n mapping to the same set, 1, 2 through n, then what we have is the following sequence of inequalities. We have i equals to 1 through n of xi, yi. So the xi's and yi's match up according to the order that they're in. This is greater than or equal to the sum of i equals 1 through n of xi, y, sigma, i. So we're permuting the y's in any possible way because we have a bijection here. And that's greater than or equal to the sum of i equals to 1 through n with the xi and y n minus i plus 1, which reverses the order of the y's. So we're, we're pairing up the x's and the y's in reverse order. So that's a rearrangement inequality, and its proof is not easy but we're going to freely use it to prove Chebyshev's inequality. I'm not going to state Chebyshev's inequality outright because it's more about applying the rearrangement inequality in an interesting way to find a result. So let's do that. Let's say we have the original numbers in the set 1, 2, 3, all the way through to n minus 2, n minus 1, n and now we're going to permute it in various ways. The first way in which we're going to permute it, we're going to call it sigma 1. It's just the identity permutation. So it maps each element to itself. The second permutation that we have starts with 2, then we do 3, then 4, all the way through to n minus 1, n, and then 1. So we're wrapping around in the same way, but we're starting with 2. Sigma 3, as you probably can predict, starts with 3. Then we have 4, then 5, all the way through to n, then 1, then 2. And we keep going like this until we get sigma n, which maps, which starts with n, so it maps 1 to n and then 1, 2, all the way through to, in the end, we have n minus 1, and then before that, n minus 2, and before that, n minus 3. So those are n permutations that we're going to use to apply to Chebyshev's inequality. And it's this middle term that's going to be most interesting. If we apply Chebyshev to these n permutations, sorry, if we apply the rearrangement inequality to these n permutations, then what we get is on the left side, we get n times the sum of the xi, yi from i equals to 1 through n. And on the right side, we get n times the sum from i equals to 1 through n of xi, y, n minus i plus 1. So the left and right sides are, are easy to figure out. It's the middle term that is a bit harder to write in a convenient form. So the middle term will be the sum from for j equals to 1 through n with inner term i equals to 1 through n 
of xi with y sigma j of i. So we're permuting the i's according to sigma j. And now what we're going to do is we're going to switch the order of the indices and we can do that because of the discrete Fubini principle. We have a video about that as well. Uh, and we can switch it without too much trouble because there's a full matrix of values. So what we get is i equals to 1 through n uh, and the inner sum is j equals to 1 through n and we still have the same term xi y sigma j of i and because we have an i in the outer term we can factor out the xi so we get the sum of i equals to 1 through n with the inner sum xi factored out j equals to 1 through n of y sigma j of i and now what, what we want to do is evaluate the inner sum conveniently so notice that i is fixed and we're iterating through the various j's so that let's let's take a look at our permutations if i is fixed let's say it's 2 and we iterate through the various j's so the sigma j's all the possible values are in there 1 through n for example if we look at the nth column we find that we have 1 2 3 all the way through to n minus 1 and n. So what that allows us to do is write this sum as the outer sum as usual being i equals to 1 through n and the inner sum being xi times j equals to 1 through n and it's simply yj because we have all the possible y's in there. And now what we're going to do is that we're just going to factor out the inner sum and put it over to the right side. So we get the sum of i equals to 1 through n of xi times the sum of j equals to 1 through n of the yj's. So it's all the x's added together times all the y's added together. And that's really nice. So we've got this sum and product here and that's going to be in between the left side and the right side. So let's write it out and we're going to divide both sides by n squared so we get something convenient. What we get is that the sum of i equals to 1 through n divided by n of xi yi is greater than or equal to the sum of i equals to 1 through n 1 over n of xi times 1 over n times the sum of j equals to 1 through n of the yj's is greater than or equal to the sum of i equals to 1 through n divided by 1 divided by n of the xi y n minus i plus 1 and that's Chebyshev's inequality now you might be wondering why we divided by n and that's so that we have this average of n terms here another average of n terms here an average of n terms here and again an average of n terms here. You can do it without. You don't necessarily have to divide by n squared but it's just a nice way of writing this in a sort of probabilistic or average type way. And the last thing that I want to mention to you is possible equality cases. Now one possible equality case is x equals to 1 equals to 
x1 equals to x2 equals to all the way through to xn, or y1 equals to y2 all the way through to yn, and both of these cases or their combination gives equality. But it's not biconditional. There are other equality cases. So there is no known way of characterizing all equality cases to the best of my knowledge. So that's Chebyshev's inequality. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.